Timothy Holloway. And I'm Riley Judd. And this is Know Your Nonsense Podcast. With some news. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a few weeks. Yes. We've missed you. We a have. lot. <laughs> we have a lot. We've missed doing this a lot. But you remember in that first episode how we said we're both in college? Yeah. College sucks. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But it does take away from the stuff that you'll want to do sometimes. College sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've been uh, struggling with that time. Yep. Um, struggling to make sure we research enough and then have enough time to record because, uh, yeah, it, ta- it takes a it takes a little minute. It takes a minute. And grades are important. Grades are, indeed. As fun as this is, we ain't making money off it yet. <laughs> no. No, we're not. But with that being said, we have figured out our next move yes. for this podcast. And our next move is we're abandoning you for a month. We, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, did not hear the for a month coming there, gotta, so I was very concerned. You gotta hit them hit hard. That's yep. the truth. So the battle plan is we're going to take a break for Thanksgiving. Short little hiatus. Short little hiatus. And... That episode that we have been delaying for weeks now. Yes. That's what you're getting when we come back. Finally. Yes. Portland, Maine, if you hadn't figured it out yeah, yet. Yeah. So, yeah. It's been long enough. We might as well tell you. It's going to be over the city, Portland, Maine. Which is going to be great, because yes. Portland's wonderful. Yes. Oh, yeah. we found wonderful stuff, but there's there's just... There's a lot. We're having trouble structuring the episode. Yes. Trouble structuring. Trouble getting the stuff we want. Trouble finding time to record. So we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back and give you that. Right. And then after that, because that'll be right around Christmas time, there will be a lovely Christmas episode for you all. A special, Woo-hoo. if you will. Yes. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. And during the break, we are going to revamp some stuff. Rework kind of our scheduling, rework uh, how we're doing it, and even a little bit of our cycle that we release with yes indeed and then once we get it all worked out we will fill in all needed details on our social medias and then come back swing in on friday january 1st starting the the process anew right whole new cycle for a whole new year 2021 let's go yes so it, it has been a bit of a rocky start but we are not done we're not we're not we're not taking this lion down we're 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 having way too much fun yes this this is a great time we hope you're all having a great time listening to us ramble about all the the fun stuff we know and don't know and pretend to know right and we hope you're learning some fun stuff along with us and having a great idea to look something up because it's a great time a great time that being said we don't want to leave you with just this little piece of news, a little, little downer of a hiatus announcement. So we have come up with a fun little thing which we are going to do, which is we have come up with some facts that relate to our passions. So for those of you, for a reminder, uh, my passions are games, programming, and design. Right, and mine are history, folklore, and food. Yes. So we have facts in those areas and we are going to see it we're going to say the fact and the other has to guess if that is a true fact or if it is false right and so whoever gets the most right gets the ultimate bragging rights to the other co-hosts yeah yeah we should have another prize all right what do you want i don't know the I'll prize is a 12 count of chick-fil-a chicken nuggets deal absolutely all righty so that's happening you want to kick things off or shall i all right first off do we want to let each other know what passion each is from i mean i think you're gonna be able to tell that's fair <laughs> you know i don't know some of mine kind of overlap with the folklore I, I, and the food and history i don't you know? think it'll matter okay, too much okay. well then fact number one true or false true or false the twelfth president of the United States, Zachary Taylor, died on a summer day due to complications after eating a pie. False. 
He's right. All right. Yeah. Um. Let me let me try to guess why it's false. Oh, okay. Uh, it's not Zachary Taylor. No, you're wrong. Okay. Yeah. I don't know my presidents. I'm okay. sorry. I'm a terrible American citizen. So as the story goes, Zachary Taylor had just been at a bunch of 4th of July celebrations, came back pretty exhausted, okay. and drowned his thirst in a glass of iced milk okay. and some cherries oh. and then some water and, you know, whatever. Here's the kicker. Kicking. In the hot summer months in Washington, D.C., bacteria grows on things like milk and oh, cherries. No. And so while it is unclear as to how exactly he died, the prevailing theory is that it was a complication from bacteria grown in the milk or on the cherries or in the water or even a bad reaction from the acidity of the cherries with the milk. So the man died because of he decided to drink an afternoon glass of milk that had been sitting out all day. That's something. Yeah. Wow. Really rough way to go, I would imagine. But hey, milk. Milk is great. Uh, <laughs> I'm just sitting that that you know complications between the milk and the cherry, and I'm just sitting here. Um, two words: ice cream. At a third word, Sunday. Like. <laughs> Are we all just yeah. dying inside? No, no, no. Remember, the sanitation was not as good I mean, back I in, guess. you know, 1850-something. Yeah. It's uh, like when you put, like, something too acidic in a smoothie and let it sit for too long. Have you ever done that? No. Pro tip, do not wait long to drink your smoothie if you de- decide to put something like pineapple or even orange in it. Because really? it's super acidic and it goes bad Best. really quick. All right, that's actually kind of interesting. Wow. Yeah, so a, there you go, Zachary Taylor. So you got that one right, though, so that's nice. what we need so to remember. I got a point. You did get a point. We gotta so keep I will score. mark that down. Yeah. yeah, I got a little notepad here. Alrighty, keeping score. All right, here's here's mine. My first one. Are you ready? Yes. All right, true or false? Letting in graphic design refers to the space in between the letters based on little blocks of lead that would be put in between uh, the letters in the original printing presses. False. I'm going with false. I'm sticking with my answer. correct. Yes, and I'm guessing it's actually called blocking? No. Dang. You are wrong. (laughs) So, the space in between letters, that is known as kerning. Kerning? What is a kern? I... Should know, but I can't tell you that. (laughs) Okay. Letting, on the other hand, though, that's the space in between the lines of text. Yeah, it's generally measured from the bottom of one line, you know, the letters, to the top of the next. And that is because there were bars of lead that were put in between the the rows of letters in the original printing presses. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, good old Gutenberg, man. He knew, he knew what was up. He knew what he was doing. And so, depending on how much space you needed and wanted, then you got to get a bigger piece of lead or a smaller piece of lead. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. And, you know, the term, it's just a, a good case of the terms sticking, you know, over the years, even though we don't use lead on a computer to space our sentences anymore. No. Yeah. It's kind of like the phrase rolling down a window. Windows don't roll yeah, down anymore. Yeah, they don't anymore. roll anymore. Yeah. Interesting. Fun fact, people. Cars used to have a lever that you rolled, like, circular. Was that we all, rolled? Yes, but, okay. like, everybody knows that. Not everybody knows that. Who doesn't know that? Children. People who are actually a wide variety of our audience. You know what? You know, children, younger college. Y'all children know things. I believe in you. All right. I so... do, too, but I guess less so. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, we got a point each. It's, All right, it's yeah, neck it's and neck. 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 Alright. The city of Detroit. Detroit. In close... How do I want to put this? Okay. In close, like, proximity with its founding, like, very, like, they're both intertwined. Okay. Is the story of a little red dwarf. True. That is actually true. You're uh-huh. right. Yep. <laughs> The story of the Nain Rouge, which essentially translates to Red Dwarf or something like that. Okay. Uh, He was a warning given to the original founder, whose name is escaping me right now, but whose family crest was actually the original 
uh, logo for Cadillac. Okay. Yeah, fun fact. Fun facts. Um, but yeah, the guy was warned to not make the name Rouge mad or else he will be forgotten. Oh. And well, the story goes, he saw the Nade Rouge and the Nade Rouge was like in front of him messing with him and he hit him with his cane. Oh. I think that qualifies as making him mad just okay. a little bit. Um, Alrighty. But yeah, and ever since, the man's settlement got taken over and renamed Detroit much later. Okay. And the little dwarf is still known among a few things, like there's stores, the drink Verner's. Oh, um, okay. That's their little mascot, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the Nain Rouge, the Shoot. little red dwarf associated with the founding of Detroit. That's that's the local cryptid I'm here for. <laughs> Incredible. Yep, it's fantastic. I love the Nain Rouge. Alrighty. So, point me. Alright, well, I gotta keep keep getting this right. Yeah. So, alright. So... In the popular game, Portal, Portal 1 and Portal 2, the ever-silent protagonist, Shell, says one line out of both games. That single line being her name in Portal 2. Oof. I feel like I should know this because we've talked Portal before. I love Portal. I've played it like once. Even if you don't play video games, play Portal. Greatest, great game. It's a fun game. Really great puzzle game. Great puzzle game. I'm going to go with false. I think the name is told to you or you found it or you like find it on a chart or something. You are correct. Yes! So <laughs> you're not correct about it being found. So uh, Well, rip. So the story here is, you know, you learn... Shell's name in the first game, I think. Not exactly. I don't. I can't remember where you first encounter her name, but she is not a true silent protagonist. So a silent protagonist is in video games a protagonist who does not talk for various and sundry reasons. Usually, this is done to boost the immersion of a game because you are able to better project yourself onto a character because it has no voice. It has no true personality except what you as the player choose to assign and so shell is a good example of this though she was going to speak in portal 2 she was actually going to say her name because in portal 2 i won't give away too much even though these games have been out for forever right but there is a time when shell is in charge of a certain procedure in the lab she works at aperture science and she needs a voice identification and the voice identification was going to be her saying her name but they omitted this because they could not find a voice actor they liked for shell but how picky do you gotta be i it's i agree because it's like you know you could find somebody and that would have been a powerful moment because they make it very clear that Shell is capable of talking, but she does not want to talk because she does not want to give the villain of the game, Gladys, the satisfaction of any reply to Gladys's snide remarks, which is why she stays silent throughout the entire games. So it would have been an incredible moment, but they couldn't find a voice actor for her. And I mean, these games had been out for a long time, a lot of popularity, and this was in Portal 2. Right. So she spent a whole game being silent. And so... You know, to find a voice for such an iconic silent character. Very tricky to do. Yeah, big sad that it didn't happen. No, I, I thought it would have been the greatest moment because Portal has some of the best writing in video games. It's so good. And it's good in comedy. It's good in drama. It's just all of it stellar. And that would have been just like the perfect like punch for the game. But alas, it didn't happen. All right, so we're neck and neck. Yeah, all That's right. Two. Let's see if I can trip you up. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. This is a good one. Despite being very unpopular, even starting in the 1800s, dueling, like, you know, dueling, you know, two guys with guns, their yeah. seconds, yeah. Um, dueling was a part of the midshipman's handbook in the Navy 
until 1850. True. Yes, but it was actually not outlawed in the Midshipman's Handbook until 1862. So do I get a point or not? I should have thought about that more. I say I get a point due to his poor planning. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that All one. Right, My poor planning. Go. Ah, <laughs> I could have had you on that one, I feel like. You really could have. Dang. You're lucky. All right. So fine. dueling. Yeah, no, for sure. There is a... The final, like, rule book for dueling, I forget what it's called, but it was written by some Irish guys, and it was reprinted in full in the Midshipman's Handbook until 1862, because they were kind of like, all right, look, nobody likes this, but you may find yourself in a duel, and if you do, this is what you do. And they, it happened, like... All righty. Yeah. Interesting. People liked uh, one-on-one fights to the death. Sometimes. Sometimes to the death. Didn't always end in death. Ah, uh, yes. Point. Okay. Alrighty. Then... I'm upset with myself about that question. I'm that very was... happy. Ah, uh, poor planning. Poor planning. Alrighty. So for this one, the first programmer ever was a woman by the name of Ada Lovelace who worked on the analytical engine in the 1800s. Ada Love. I know that name. Where do I know that name? I think that's false. That's not the actual name. You are wrong. Ah, no. (laughs) Yes, Ada Lovelace is a very, very prominent and important programmer. As well, you know, she is the first. She has multiple publications. She has some of the best quotes you will find in programming. I knew I was thinking books for a reason. Mm -hmm. That's where I've seen her name. Yeah, probably. Uh, But hey, props to her. Way to go. Ada. Yes. Killing it. First programmer ever. Woman. Girl power. Go girl. Rock on. She is some of my favorite quotes when it comes to programming are from her. Like she has some wonderful quotes about artificial intelligence and Mm -hmm. machine learning uh, even though that technically wasn't even around at her time when she first started programming. But Ada Lovelace, a name to know. So For real, though, yeah. Way to go, Lovelace. That puts me ahead. Yes. Let's go, one, baby. Chicken nuggets the, are coming. By my own poor planning, too. Yes. Ugh. We could have stayed tied. We could have. All right. So, the story is that the origin of coffee came when a guy named Kaldi in Ethiopia found out that his kids could not fall asleep or did not want to fall asleep more like after eating this new fruit like berry thing that they found. True. False. Ah, rats. It was his goats. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. Okay then. Straight up goat farmer realized, wait, my goat's been eating off this weird bush, this weird plant, and they're going crazy. They're losing their minds right now. What is happening? See, that's that's interesting. Especially because caffeine is, you know, it's meant to be a deterrent. You know, it's meant to, it's it's basically a poison. It's meant to poison things that want to eat the plant. Yeah. And it's a great example of, you know, humans eating things that are poisonous to most creatures. Yeah, we're weird like yeah. that. It's... I mean, we eat things that are poisonous to ourselves. Yeah. So, alcohol, pineapple. Yeah, that's very true. Yep. Humans are weird, man. Humans are weird. Love it. Yes. All righty, so we're back to being tied. No, because I need to get the next one to oh, be tied. Oh, that's true. Yeah. All righty, then. All righty, so it is very, not very well known, but well known, that programming has weird acronyms. Oh, no. Lots of weird ones, like GUI, graphical user interface, GUI. Right. Though, none of them quite come, in my eyes, to the craziest acronym, which is WYSIWYG. (laughs) WYSIWYG is an official programming acronym. True or false? Part of me really wants to say true because that's so outlandish. I want it to be true. I really want it to be true. But what on earth could WYSIWYG stand for? Am I allowed to ask how it's spelled? 
No. Oh, rip. In that case, I'm going with false because I just don't think you thought about how it would be spelled. <laughs> no, it's true. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> WYSIWYG. W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G. What you see is what you get. What the crap? WYSIWYG. WYSIWYG. It's a real acronym. Code, coding, code people make some weird stuff when it comes to acronyms. And sometimes they are quite redundant from the redundancy department of redundancy. That's not an actual thing, right? Or no, you... no, that's not real. I was about that's, to say, you're joke. referencing Phineas and Ferb, aren't you? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if they made Redundant it. scribe of redundantness? I mean, they, they probably got, I don't know. Oh, it's a thing. It was a great it's episode. just a thing. Yep. All right, fine. Well, i got to trip you up on this next one and then still get the next one. This is true. Okay. <clears throat> Atlantis was first mentioned by Plato back, you know, a long time ago. Long time I don't ago. actually have Plato written down. Yeah. But the common misconception is that they were the heroes of the story when in fact they were the villains. True or false? True, they were the villains. Dang it. You were right. Aha. Because wasn't right. it something like. I don't know, they got really proudful, so the gods were like, no you, and they sent them to the bottom of the ocean. Ish, in a nutshell. Okay. Like, they, they got, the way that Plato puts it in his work, I have it right here, give me a moment, in his uh, Critias, Crit, Crit, Critias? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yet inwardly they were filled with an unjust lust for possessions and power. But as Zeus, god of the gods, reigning as king, according to law, could clearly see the state of affairs, he observed this noble race lying in the, this abject state and resolved to punish them. Ah. Yeah. Next thing you know, Atlantis, this utopia of a city, this powerhouse, sank. Was it a real place? We don't know. But yes, they were the villains. And I really hate that you got that. I hope that you're gonna hate it more than know that I only know that because of Aquaman. What? (laughs) Yeah, in Aquaman, that's why they're underwater in Aquaman, because they used to be on the surface and then they were really prideful or something and they sank. Okay, full disclosure: I only watched that movie once on the way to Scotland on an airplane. I liked it. It was good. It was a pretty good movie. Nothing, nothing too great to write home about, though, in my opinion. So, well. All right, well, I got to get the next two just to tie. Yeah, and, and I got to get none. The yeah. last one, yeah. All righty, so. Georgia typeface, which I actually think is one of the typefaces we use. Isn't it? I think so. It might be. I, I don't have the branding book on me. I meant to check. But Georgia typeface. This was named after the creator of the typeface, Matthew Carter's. Great, great aunt. Is that, is that it? Yeah, true or false. Oh, gosh. Okay. More like it's great, 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 great. 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 Watch Emperor's New Groove. It's Watch wonderful. It. Great movie. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with true. I think this dude was had a connection with his great, great aunt. You are wrong, sir. Dang it. <laughs> Oh, boy. So, Georgia Typeface actually did not have a name when it was first in use. Matthew Carter did make the typeface, and it was used for a header in a paper, I believe. And the header was, Alien Heads Found in Georgia. And that's how they got the name? And that's that's what Matthew Carter chose what? to name his font after. And so, fonts have some fun names. They're, they're quite quite the names and it's fun to know the history of where they come from yeah apparently (laughs) i'm gonna have to look that up because that's called that's kind of awesome yeah mad that it wasn't his great aunt but you know yeah Um, (laughs) definitely came up with that on the whim i was gonna make that one true but then i was like "Eh, no fine (laughs) well it's official you then you've won but let's keep saying yes let's keep going this is fun all right so this guy a fake it till you make it champ. Okay. Guy by the name of Ferdinand de Mara of the Canadian Navy. Faked being an engineer when their ship got hit in the Korean War, ran into the engine room, not knowing anything about what he was doing, but 
told the guys in there, yeah, I'm an engineer, and helped them fix the engine and get home safely. True. False. Dang it. You want to guess how it's false? They all died. No. Dang it. <laughs> he pretended to be a surgeon. What? Yeah. They started taking on heavy casualties and was faking being a surgeon on the mm. ship and proceeded to operate successfully on 16 men, including a major chest wound, saved them all after going to his cabin for 16 minutes with a medical textbook beforehand. Wow. Yes. Okay, that's kind of awesome. Master procrastinator and fake it till you make it. <laughs> fake it till Champion. you make it. But yeah, what, what happened afterwards? I mean, they got back. And... I think he got arrested. Oh, I mean, he was still pretending to practice me- uh, medicine without a license. This so. is true. I guess arrested in good favor? Question mark. Is that a thing? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I. You know, if he got arrested, but he closed my major chest wound. I mean, yeah, but if that was the MP right there. It's like, I'm not going to arrest that guy. He just saved my life. Yeah. I don't know, man. That's wild. I know, right? All right. It's a great time. Okay. So, that's all of yours, Craig. Yes, that is the last of the ones I had. All righty. I will give you this one. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a chance. Oh. So, if you get this right... Then I will also buy you nuggets. Though you still have to buy me nuggets. Of course, of course. Alrighty. By the way, we're not sponsored by Chick-fil-A. So. Not at all. I wish. That'd be amazing. <laughs> I know. But uh, I we just love Chick-fil-A. It's just good food and we're hungry. And it's on campus, so it's super easy. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if you get this right, you get some nugs. All right. So Kirby. Nintendo's pink puffball was originally going to be named, and I quote, Oh no. Twinkle Poyo. Twinkle Poyo. Yes. True or false? Um, uh, okay. Again, I feel like this is something we've discussed before. This is like, definitely not something we've no? discussed. No, okay. I remember We've discussed seeing... Kirby before, that's yes. for sure. Yes, Kirby is a very iconic Nintendo character, up there with Mario. It's great, yeah. And I remember seeing a post about it, like a a Nintendo post. Nintendo put forth this piece of trivia, and the creator of Kirby had a very snide remark to that little piece of Nintendo Twitter trivia, which I will not share. If you want to look it up, you can go look it up. But... Okay. Um, But the original name was Twinkle Poyo. I'm going... With false. I'm sticking with it. I'm you stick- sticking with it? I'm sticking with it. Are you sure? Yes. Don't give me that suspense. What are you doing? <laughs> you get some nugs. Yes. It's false. It was okay, originally so... going to be Twinkle Popopo. Popopo. Yes. I'm not sure which is better. Poyo is better because Kirby actually says the sound Poyo in my eyes. Wait, he does? Yeah, in various pieces of media. But... Oh, okay. It's actually quite interesting how he got his name. He was named after a lawyer. Okay. Lawyer John Kirby. Who Did he also sell vacuums? No. Okay. But John Kirby actually saved Nintendo in a lawsuit against Universal Studios. What were they being sued by Universal for? Universal was suing Nintendo saying that Donkey Kong infringed upon King Kong, the movie that they had rights to. This lasted two years. It was a two-year lawsuit. And at the end of the day, John Kirby was the one to convince the court that the similarities between Donkey Kong and King Kong were superfluous, getting Nintendo quite the bit of money saving them from the jaws of universal so in th- in thank you nintendo bought him a boat first off which they named donkey kong <laughs> and then they named their upcoming platform star kirby after him all right then i yikes that's amazing yeah. way to go john kirby yeah. first off 
And dang. Just dang. I know. Isn't that awesome? But more importantly, we both get chicken nuggets. Yes, we do. That's what I'm talking about. I was victorious. I know my nonsense better than you. Yes, that's, you must that's admit fair. This, admit that was it, say not, the words. Not a part of the Sam, deal. But I am not. Audience. I am not overly, overly prideful. It's okay. You knew your nonsense better than I did. Ha ha! Wow. It's fine. Ha ha ha! I will win eventually. Eventually, and foreshadowing. That is foreshadowing. Eventually. So that's what we got for you today. Yeah, that's all we got. We hope you enjoyed that. We hope you learned want something from one of these little facts. Yes, I hope you had a good time. Yeah. And so we will be seeing you in a month, but we won't. We probably won't completely disappear. No, we'll, we'll still... probably social media is right. You know, Facebook, Instagram. We'll post proof of nuggets. Proof that's of happening. nuggets. Yeah. Yes. Maybe some nugget facts. Some nuggets of wisdom. Huh? Wow. Huh? I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> more more so, I can't believe I didn't think of it first. <laughs> so. Yeah, check us out on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, yes. YouTube. It's all KYN Podcast. Yes. So if, give us a look. If any of this was wrong, if any of our facts were wrong, our facts, quote unquote, were wrong, yell at us. Tell us we are wrong. Tell the world that we failed. And go ahead if you have more stuff to yell at us about, whether that be praises or angry fact checking. Either go one. ahead and email us at kynpodcast at gmail dot com. We are happy to address anything you send us. Right. And that's that. We will be back in a month, and we will miss you guys. Have a great Thanksgiving, a great November, and we will. I guess see you later after we yeah yeah peace out bye <laughs>